Hello, this is uh, chapter three, and in this video we're going to um, look into the external and internal view of the number display class. Um, before we do that, if you'd like to go ahead and investigate the number display class, um, I'm trying to work out what the set value method and increment method does. Um, don't look at the clock display code just yet, and uh, we're going to look at that later. Um, but have a good look at the number display uh, class and try and work those out. Um, once you do that, then um, come back to the video and then we'll go through it. Okay, so let's have a look at this um, uh, this class, the number display class. So here we have our uh, uh, blue jay, um, and uh, we can create our number display. Now the way this works is uh, is the way that a normal clock works in a rollover limit. So what you do is you put in, um, for example, sixty, which is the rollover limit for for minutes. So you can never get to sixty minutes um, on a particular clock. So for example, it can only be three fifty eight. 3.59 and then it'll turn to 4 o'clock so you can never have that so that's the way it works so uh, when you create this you put in let's use the 60 limit just to, to show you there's our 60 limit um, and there we go um, if we gotta get our display value we get a, a 0 uh, if we get an insert get value we also get a 0 those are just two representations of the same field um, so the increment method is effectively the tick method. So if we tick it along one, uh, we get a display value of zero one, uh, and we we'll also get a, a value of one. Okay, so that's just the, the field there uh, that's being shown in two different ways. We're only going to use um, the get display value from now on. So then, as the clock ticks away, we can uh, use this um, void increment to tick the clock away, and it keeps ticking. Um, and then we can add display value and then we can see that it's up to four now. The other method, which is the set value, is the um, int uh, replacement value, it takes that as a parameter and we can put in the actual um, value of the time. So if we put in 57, um, if we do a get display value, you will see that it's now turned to 57. And as we tick over that one, two times, we'll see that um, the display value is now on 59. It will now behave in the same way that normal clock does, so when you increment that one more time, it will effectively go back to zero, and so it keeps clocking over. So that's the basic idea of the clock display project and the number display class within that project. Okay, so that concludes what the class does from the outside. So let's now have a look internally to see what it does. So here we have our number display and we can see that we've got two fields in the class, both of type int, one is a limit and one is of the value. We can now see um, the uh, constructor and it takes a parameter of uh, one type int parameter. Um, and what we do is, as you learned in a previous lesson, uh, the um, parameter which is taken is only a short-lived uh, parameter and it only lasts between these two braces. Now what we're, sh what we're saying here is the limit field equals the rollover limit um, which we put in for us it was 24 so the rollover limit is 24 and now that makes the limit equal 24 um, and then we set the value to 0 so the first time we checked the value we did it was a value of 0 um, and at 0 is the clock effectively. So that's our um, number display um, constructor. We've then got four other methods which we'll have a quick look through now. Um, first of all let's have a look at the get value. So this is a standard getter method. Um, we've got our public um, accessor, mo access modifier there, our return type of int, um, so we return our, our int integer there, and there's the method name get value, um, and then the, uh, the value returned is the value field. Let's have a look at the get display value. So the the type returned here. If we compare the two types here, we've got uh, a string return. So it returns a string, and the get value method actually returns an integer. So we can see that uh, two different methods here returning two different types, but they're actually the same um, field uh, information it's returning, but of, of different type. So if we look at the get display value, first of all we, we throw in a little if else statement. Um, so what we say is if the value is less than 10, um, return the 0 
plus the value. So this is just to show it nicely on the screen. Um, um, if it's if if it's not um, if it's uh, if it's greater than ten, um, then we don't need to adjust how it looks. So it will be a um, it will return it as, for example, an eleven as opposed to um, zero eleven. Um, so the idea with this particular one, um, if, we have, uh, if we just try this out here, if we imagine returning the number um, three, if we saw the number three on a clock face, it wouldn't be very, um, uh, it wouldn't sort of show us what we need. We like to see the number zero three. So this this first um, part here, the if statement, is if it's just a three, it adds on a zero. Um, however, the second part here, if the number is actually 11 in the field, then that's all we want to see. We want to see the number 11. Okay, so that's that's what that is doing. Here we have our um, public void set value method, and this value, as we saw, um, is to actually set the value um, that you want it to. If you remember, we set it to the value 57. So um, we've got um, a public access modifier. Void is to say that there's nothing going to be returned, it's just going to do something. So this is a, a setter or mutator method. Um, it says set value here, and then we need a parameter of the, of the um, re replacement value. Um, now, as in a previous lesson, we saw, we saw about um, the operators and the AND operators. So we can see we're actually doing two things in this particular, um, uh, in this particular method. So let's just have a look at what we're doing here. We can see that we're actually um, looking at to see whether the replacement value is greater or equal to zero. Uh, make sure that it's not a negative number. We also then make sure that it's less than the limit because obviously we can't um, in a in a 60 minute clock we can't have um, a 65 minutes represented so that does that and then the, uh, the and the and values there show that we need to um, and those two together so both of those need to be true before we can move on and uh, set the value as the new replacement value um, finally, the the clever bit, I suppose, of this of this class and um, of this um, uh, of this code here is the increment method. So, as you learned previously, you need to use the modulo um, in this particular um, method here. So, what we say is the uh, value. Let's just bring this up for you again. We say that the value equals the current value plus one modulo limit. So what we do is we do the actual tick itself, um, but then we effectively make the value so that it's, it's within the limit. So let's just have a look at that. If we use uh, 59 as the, as the field to start with, the value, of, um, uh, the value field is equal to 59. So then we say, uh, let's just work that out. So we say, uh, 59 plus 1 and in those brackets we see that is equal to 60 and then we do 60 modulo limit and as we learned previously that 60 modulo limit is like saying 60 divided by um, the uh, the limit, which in our case is 60 as well, so it becomes 60 modulo 60, um, and then we say 60 modulo 60 is like 60 divided by 60 is one, and there is no remainder. So in this case, it becomes zero, um, and so 59 ticking over will then turn into zero. So that's how the increment method works, and that works the same if it's a 24-hour clock. Um, it um, it won't become 20, uh, 24, it will go to 23, and then when it ticks over again, it will tick over to zero in that method. Okay, that concludes um, 
uh, that section. Let's just move on now. Uh, those are the two methods which we covered. Um, and then and there's a little exercise for you to investigate there. Um, look into the number display, look into the logical operators, and some further questions to test your understanding there. So make sure that you can do all that, and hopefully you should be able to understand that. Okay, see you next time.